Good morning, this is Kat Bray. Welcome to our second reading lesson of the week. So today we're looking at retrieving information from a text. First of all, what I'd like you to do is read the following statements and see if they are a fact or an opinion. So Felix is a kind-hearted boy. Felix heard lots of gunshots. When he gets home, he'll feel better. And Felix is a town kid. So pause the video. Write down on your whiteboard if they are facts or opinions. And when you're ready, press play. Okay, so before we go through the answers, let's just remind ourselves what a fact is and what an opinion is. So a fact is a statement that can be proven to be true. An opinion is an expression of a person's feelings. Okay, so let's have a look. Felix is a kind-hearted boy. That can be de debatable. Some people might think that, some people might not. So it's an opinion. I know. Felix heard lots of gunshots. I think that's a fact. He did hear lots of gunshots on his way, on his journey by the river. When he gets home, he'll feel better. That's an opinion. We don't know. We won't be able to be proven how he feels. And Felix is a town kid. He tells us that. He says he's not a country kid, he's a town kid. So that's a fact. Okay, hopefully you got all of those right. So let's get your text ready on page 38, ready to text mark with me. Once I walked all night and all the next day except for a short sleep in a forest and all night again and then I was home. This paragraph tells us how long it takes Felix to get home. In our town, in our street. It's just like I remember. One almost. The street is narrow like I remember. And the buildings are all two levels high and made of stone and bricks with slate roofs like I remember. But the weird thing is, there are hardly any food shops. Here, I can really visualise this, I might even draw it. On a narrow street, the buildings that are on it are two, two levels high. And they're made of stone and brick with a slate roof. At the orphanage, I used to spend hours in class daydreaming about all the food shops in our street. The cake shop next to the ice cream shop, next to the roast meat shop, next to the jelly and jam shop, next to the fried potato shop, next to the chocolate covered licorice fully, etc. So here, Felix describes this row of shops all selling different foods. Here's some licorice, if you don't know, not sure what licorice is, type of sweet. Was I making all that up? Now he's even doubting himself, isn't he? And he thinks, have I been gone so long that I've actually got confused as to what it used to look like? Something else is different too. Dawn was ages ago, but nobody's out. So dawn, we know it's the beginning of day, day, isn't it, when the sun rises. No one's out and about. Our street used to be crowded as soon as it got light. People doing things, going places, even though they were still yawning. Farm animals complaining because they didn't like being on the cobbles. And kids pinching things from the market stalls. Guess the word here. I've just read it. That shows you the cobbled street. Okay, so here he compares me to what he remembers it being like to what it's like now. One thing is, he said there used to be lots of food shops. No, there's none. And also, at the dawn, it used to be really, really busy, however early it was. But now there's no one around. The whole street is deserted. No one's there. I walk along from the corner wondering if my memory is wrong. That can happen when you're hungry and tired and your feet hurt because your shoes are too big. So again, he justifies, actually, I might have got this wrong. Maybe I'm just tired or I haven't eaten very well for the last few days. Maybe I'm just getting confused. Perhaps I'm confused. Perhaps I'm remembering all the stories I've made up about a noisy, crowded street. Perhaps I've made the crowds up too. Then let's see. Our shop. They're on the next corner and I know I haven't made that up. So here, even though he's doubted himself, seen his shop, his mum and dad's bookseller shop, and he knows actually, no, I haven't made any of this up, I'm home. Everything's the same. The peeling green paint on the door, the metal post for customers to lean their bikes on, the front step where Simon Glick threw up as he was leaving my fifth birthday party. So here we can see the bookshop, we can imagine it, it's two stories high, we know it's quite on a narrow street. We know now the green paint, so I might, it's the green but it's peeling off, so it's quite old and worn. Um, and there's a metal post here outside so that people could have put their bikes there. Now I'm good at drawing, there's my bike. I propped it up before they came into the bookshop. 
And he'd also remembered something from when he was little, having a birthday party, one of his friends, when he was five, threw up. <laughs> so he was sick, so probably have too much good food or sweets. And there's not a single nasty burn mark anywhere on the shop. I feel relieved, but a bit weak from hunger as well, and I have to stop and hold on to the wall of Mr. Rosenfield's house. So having to stop and hold on to the wall is having to stop and hold himself up. He feels so weak that he's so hungry, but he's so relieved because he can't see any evidence of the Nazis being there because he can't see the Nazi burn marks. Now I'm so close to home, I'm starting to feel sad. I wish mum and dad were here instead of away persuading their favourite authors to write faster or to try and sell books on gun safety to soldiers. Take a deep breath. Haven't got time to be sad. Got to plan to carry out. Hide the books before the Nazis get here. Then I'll have plenty of time to find a railway receipt and be reunited with mum and dad. So remember, he's on a mission, isn't he? He wants to get to the bookshop, hide the books so they don't get burnt, and then he's hoping to find some evidence, a receipt maybe of some train tickets that mum and dad have bought, so he knows then where they've gone. Reunited means uh, seeing them again. First, I've got to get to the, into the shop. I walk over and try the door, but it's locked. I'm not surprised. Mum's dad was a locksmith before he was killed in a ferry sinking accident. Mum's very big on locks, except on toilet doors in ferries. So here, it, we've given some information about Mum's dad, so his granddad. Here's a locksmith, somebody who fixes and puts locks on doors. So we know that she was very safety conscious, and because her dad did the job, probably did them for her shop. But he um, then died in a ferry sinking accident. He died on a ferry, a type of boat or ship. Appearing through the shop, so you can imagine Felix outside peering in. If I have to smash my way in, I must make sure the flying bits don't damage the book. So again, he's being conscious. If he can't open the door and he has to smash a window, he doesn't want any of the glass going on the book. I stare for a long time. I have to because when you're shocked and horrified and you're feeling sick, your eyes don't work very well, even with glasses. There aren't any books. All the books in the shop are gone. The shelves are still there, but no books. Just old coats and hats and underwear. I can't believe it. So here, we're told he actually feels sick to his stomach with the sight that he sees now. When he peers in the window, he sees there's no books. So his mission was all this way, walking all day and night with no food, was to come and save the books from Mum and Dad's bookshop. None there. All that's there, we are told, are coats, hats and underwear. The Nazis can't have burnt the books, or the lock would have been broken. There would be ashen, weeping customers everywhere. So he says, no, actually, the Nazis can't have burnt them. There's evidence why they can't have, because they would have just smashed open the bookshop. They'd have had no regard. They wouldn't have mind breaking it, but we know the door's securely locked. There would be ash. That's the remnants, isn't it, of a fire. When we put out a fire, the ash, the bits that have been burnt. And weeping customers, crying people everywhere. So he thinks, actually, the Nazis can't have burnt them. So what's happened? Have mum and dad changed their business to second-hand clothes? So now he thinks, have mum and dad changed? Have they stopped being booksellers? Have they started selling second-hand clothes now? Never. They love books too much. Mum's not interested in clothes. She always says that to Miss Flip. So here we're given two reasons why actually mum and dad wouldn't have changed their business. They love books too much, is the first reason. And two, mum's not even interested in clothes. Have I got the wrong shop? So now Felix questions himself again. I kneel at the door. It is the right shop. Here are my initials where I scratched in the green paint the day before I went to the orphanage so the other kids around here wouldn't forget me. Well, this makes me sad, isn't it? She must have known that he was going away and mum and dad were taking him because he actually put his initials, scratched them into the green paint. So imagine his initials, like his would be Felix. If I scratched my initials, it would be our first and second name, into the paint. And he did this for a really sad reason. He didn't want all the other kids to forget about him. What's going on? Have mum and dad hidden the books? Suddenly I hear voices coming from our flat over the shop. A man and a woman. Thank you, God, and the others. Mum! I yell. Dad! Mum and dad stop talking, but they don't reply. They don't even open the window. I can see their faint shapes moving behind the curtains. Why aren't they flinging the windows open and yelling with joy? So here as a reader, we're thinking, actually, if it was mum and dad, they would be doing those things, wouldn't they? Um, 
but we can see they're faint shapes moving behind the curtain. So their curtains are closed, so they don't want to be seen. They want to be hidden. And they're faint shapes, so they're hiding away. They're not flinging the windows open. Of course, it's been three years and eight months. My voice has changed and I look different. Plus, I'm wearing the rabbit hunter's clothes. They'll recognise me once they see the notebook. So again, Felix making justifications. He's saying, actually, because he's been gone away for so long, maybe his voice has changed and they don't recognise him just by how he sounds. He also says he looks different and he's wearing different clothes, like a rabbit hunter's clothes. But he does say, actually, they'll recognise my book. They'll recognise this notebook that he carries around. The shop door is locked, so I race around the back and up the steps. Think about why the author's chosen this word, race. It means he's ran, isn't it? He ran quickly, he's running quickly because he's excited and he wants to see them. The back of the uh, flat is open. Mum! I yell, bursting in again. Another vocab choice. Bursting in, racing around, showing his excitement. Dad! They're not stopping my track. While I was running up the steps, part of me feared our kitchen furniture would be gone just like the book, but it's all here exactly where it was. The stove, the oven, where Mum used to make me carrot soup interesting isn't it so the very first sentence I almost caused a riot in the orphanage over a carrot the table where I had all my meals and I'm not finishing it there so we'll see what happens next lesson so you have 12 questions all about retrieving information from the text I've uploaded this sheet onto seesaw write on the sheet send it to me and we'll see how you get on I'll see you tomorrow bye